Now we all know that flat earthers still haven't given a logical explanation for sunrise and sunset on the equinox, but today I'm going to take a look at December solstice sun observations in the southern hemisphere that make absolutely no sense at all on the flat earth model. Now during the December solstice, everybody sees the sunrise in the southeast and set in the southwest. So I'm going to compare the observed sun that I saw in my hometown of Seattle, Washington, which is in the northern hemisphere, to the observed sun I saw in Queenstown, New Zealand, which is in the southern hemisphere. Seattle is located in the northwest corner of the United States at 47.6 degrees north latitude. I'm going to start with the June solstice because it's easier to understand how the sun moves across the sky from Seattle. And I'm using this graphic from suncalc.org because it shows exactly what I see when I'm in Seattle. So sun rises to the northeast at 5.11 a.m. And the rising sun moves to your right and is to the south of you at solar noon. And it continues moving to your right to set in the northwest at 9.11 p.m. And of course, this is our longest day of the year at 16 hours. Now after sunset, it is the northwest horizon that is lit during dusk, and the sun continues on a path below the northern horizon to the east, where at dawn it lights the northeast horizon before sunrise. Now this is the sun path that is the basis of the flat earth model, because at night it appears to go around the north pole. Now during the December solstice, of course, the sun is observed rising towards the southeast. And again, the observed sun moves across the sky to the right to set in the southwest, and this is our shortest day of the year at eight and a half hours. And now the sun continues on a path below the western, northern, and eastern horizon as it returns to the southeast to rise again in the morning. Now many years ago, I spent a week in Queenstown, which is in the southern part of the South Island of New Zealand. And at 45 degrees south latitude, it's pretty equivalent to the 47.6 degree north latitude of Seattle. But the observed path of the sun in Queenstown is quite different than the observed path of the sun in Seattle. Now, while it's winter in the northern hemisphere during the December solstice, it is summer in the southern hemisphere. And again, I'm going to use suncalc.org's graphics because they match what I saw when I was in Queenstown. So from Queenstown, the observed sun rises in the southeast at 5.17 a.m. And the rising sun moves to the left to the north at solar noon. And it continues moving left across the sky to set in the southwest at 9.32 p.m. And this is their longest day of the year at 15.6 hours. Now this is a little bit less than Seattle's 16 hour long day during the June solstice, but this is because Queenstown is a few degrees closer to the equator. And after sunset, it is the southwest horizon that is lit after dusk as the sun travels below the southern horizon to light the southeast horizon before sunrise. So I have a question for flat earthers, and of course this includes flatzoid because I know he lives in the southern hemisphere. So if the earth is really flat with a sun orbiting around the north pole, then why would anyone observe a sun path that is in the complete opposite direction? The north pole is 9,330 miles in this direction, and anybody that lives or travels to the southern hemisphere knows that at night the observed sun goes below the southern horizon. And that would be a path that takes it around the south pole. So again, when you're in the southern hemisphere, this is the observed path of the setting sun. It angles down to the left. And here's a time-lapse video of the setting sun from Australia, which is in the southern hemisphere, and you can see the sun is angling down to the left. But when you're in the northern hemisphere, you see the setting sun angling down to the right. And here's a time-lapse of the setting sun from my hometown of Seattle, and you can see the sun angling down to the right to set behind the Olympic Mountains in the distance. A 
Of course, the flat Earth model is based on a sun that orbits around the North Pole, and it really doesn't take much common sense at all to understand that if this was the case, then everybody on Earth should see the sun moving in the same direction around the North Pole. Now, I live in the tropics, and Singapore, which is on the equator, is a little bit over 900 miles to the south of me. And when you go there, what do you see? A sun that sets perpendicular to the horizon. And here's the time lapse of the setting sun from Singapore. So again, the observed path of the sun that we actually see from different locations on Earth make absolutely no sense at all if the Earth was flat. And finally, let's take one last look at the observed sun path from Queensland, New Zealand, where we see sunrise in the southeast and sunset in the southwest. And this brings up another question, because we know the path of the sun on the December solstice is above the Tropic of Capricorn, and the Tropic of Capricorn is to the north of Queenstown. So can any flat earther give a logical explanation of why people in Queenstown see the sun rise to the southeast and set in the southwest, when on the flat earth the sun is always to the north of them? Now these sun observations in the southern hemisphere are one of the reasons I have often said that ignorance is bliss when it comes to flat earth beliefs. Because flat earthers need to ignore reality.